Today we are going to talk about how to sterilize tissue culture media by using a pressure cooker. Now there are two main ways to sterilize tissue culture media at home. The first way is by using a microwave. And if you've watched Tatum Sweets videos, you'll know that this is how she sterilizes tissue culture media at home. A lot of people prefer the microwave because it's faster and it's more convenient than using a pressure cooker sometimes. It's something that a lot of us already have in our houses anyway, but using a pressure cooker as an autoclave achieves a higher level of sterility than you can get in a microwave. Autoclaving uses steam at high pressure and temperature to kill all microorganisms, including spores, which can survive microwave sterilization. Before we get into this video, please remember to like and subscribe. I make new tissue culture videos weekly. You can buy autoclaves that are specifically designed for laboratory use, but a pressure cooker will also do the trick. Today I'm using a 23 quart Presto pressure cooker from Amazon to sterilize half a liter of tissue culture media. I actually have two of these bad boys, so my house looks sketchier than ever. First, place a cooking rack on the bottom of the pressure cooker. You never wanna place anything directly on the bottom of the pressure cooker without a cooking rack. My pressure cooker requires 12 cups of water, so that's what I added right away. Depending on the size of your pressure cooker and the make and model, the amount of water that you need to add may be different. Now you can see if I put the jars of media directly in the pressure cooker now, they would be partially submerged in the water, which we do not want. You can buy spacers to keep your jars out of the water, but I just create a small platform using empty jars. Alternatively, you can create a platform by crumpling up some aluminum foil and placing them on the bottom cooking rack to create kind of some space there <laughs> so that your jars aren't sitting in the water. And then I pour my tissue culture media into individual 250 milliliter containers. Then I begin to place the tissue culture jars into the pressure cooker on top of that platform that we created. None of the lids get secured onto the jars, they just sit lightly on top. Securing the lids will create a pressure differential inside of the jars and it can cause them to explode inside the pressure cooker which we do not want. You also wanna take care not to have the jars touching each other inside of the pressure cooker. I find that the 23 quart pressure cooker can hold around nine or 10 jars comfortably. 10's kind of pushing it, but I can get 10 jars in there. The jars that I use for tissue culture are glass and the lids are designed to be autoclavable. A lot of people use deli containers for tissue culture, which is totally fine. They're very economical and inexpensive. But if you are going to be autoclaving deli containers, you need to make sure with the manufacturer that they're able to be autoclaved. The temperature inside of the autoclave at 15 PSI is going to be 121 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very hot and we don't want your containers to melt. Here's a basic diagram that outlines the main components of some of the more common pressure cookers. Mine is the one on the bottom right, and I'll be using the terminology in this diagram to talk about different parts of the pressure cooker throughout this video. There are two safety checks you need to make before securing the lid onto the top of the pressure cooker. First, you need to check that the cover lock can move freely. The second check is to hold the lid of the pressure cooker up to a window or a light source, and make sure that you can see through the vent pipe. If you can't see through it, then you need to clean it out with a very tiny brush or a pin. The next step is to secure the lid onto the pressure cooker and move it over to the stove if it's not already there. I have a gas range and I've never used a pressure cooker on an electric stove top. If you have an electric stove and you want to use a pressure cooker, I would recommend watching some tutorials of people pressure canning or pressure cooking on an electric stove top. I've seen it done, I just think the process might differ slightly from using a gas range. Alternatively, if you have an Instapot, you can also use the Instapot to autoclave tissue culture media as well. Once the pressure cooker lid is secured, turn the burner up to high heat. After a few minutes, steam will start to be released from the vent pipe. Once you have a steady stream of steam coming out of the vent pipe, set a timer for 10 minutes. At this point, the pressure gauge will still read somewhere very close to zero, or it may still say zero, which is totally normal at this point. The airlock will pop up, which signifies that some pressure is starting to build inside of the pressure cooker. And at this point, do not open the pressure cooker. It is super dangerous. I recommend reading your pressure cooker's manual in depth before using one. You never ever want to open a pressure cooker if there's pressure inside of it. After the 10 minutes of releasing steam from the pressure cooker is up, place the pressure regulator on top of the vent pipe. The pressure regulator is also sometimes called a rocker. At this point, the pressure should start to rise as reflected by the pressure gauge. When the internal pressure reaches 15 PSI, the pressure regulator will begin to rock back and forth and make a very distinct sound. 
Once the rocker begins to shake, set another timer for 20 minutes. At sea level, the internal temperature of the pressure cooker at 15 psi is going to be 121 degrees celsius. You'll need to play with the heat of the burner, adjusting it up and down to keep the temperature around 15 psi. If the pressure starts to get too high, just turn down the heat of the burner and the pressure will start to lower. While there's pressure inside of the pressure cooker, you should always be near it or watching it. Now, I want to mention that I live at sea level, so the pressure that I'm trying to maintain is 15 psi. In general, for every 1,000 feet of elevation above sea level, you'll need to increase the psi by 1 psi. So for example, if you live 5,000 feet above sea level, instead of cooking at 15 psi, you would need to cook at 20 psi. It's important to note also that cooking times may need to be adjusted for high altitude cooking as well due to the lower atmospheric pressure. After 20 minutes at 15 psi, I just turn the burner off completely and the pressure cooker will slowly start to depressurize. While the pressure cooker is depressurizing, you want to leave the pressure regulator on the lid. Don't take it off. You never want to open the pressure cooker while there is any sort of pressure inside at all. Even if the gauge reads zero, if the airlock is in the up position, there is still pressure inside of the cooker. I usually wait around four to six hours after autoclaving before I actually open the pressure cooker. It does stay hot for a very long time, so be careful not to burn yourself. When you're ready to open it, you'll need to wash your hands, put on a pair of gloves, and then I spray the gloves with 70% ethanol, but you can also use a different type of rubbing alcohol like isopropyl, or alternatively, you could use a 10% bleach solution as well. Never mix alcohol and bleach. The tissue culture jars are sterile inside of the pressure cooker at this point, so we want to be careful not to introduce them to bacteria or spores. So carefully remove the lid of the pressure cooker and twist the lids of the jars onto the jars one by one. Every couple jars I respray my hands with alcohol just to keep things as sanitary as possible. After a few hours of cooling to room temperature, the tissue culture media will be ready to use. Ideally, you want to wait a few days before using the tissue culture media to make sure that it's not contaminated and doesn't grow any mold or bacteria. Using this method though of autoclaving tissue culture media, I have never had any issues with media contamination. I do occasionally get explant contamination from not cleaning my explants well enough, but that's different from your media just being contaminated right out the gate. <laughs> if you're struggling with media contamination, then I would recommend adding plant preservative mixture or PPM to your media recipes. PPM is basically just a heat stable biocide that helps reduce contamination of the media itself. If you want to try out PPM, head over to Plant Cell Technologies website and use code plants in jars for 10% off your order. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the process. I know it can be really intimidating to use a pressure cooker at first. I had never used one for pressure canning or cooking any food or anything like that. So using it as an autoclave has kind of been my first experience with a pressure cooker, but it's definitely a really great way to make tissue culture media and I highly recommend it instead of the microwave. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.